Steve Kim for UCN, and I'm here with the managing director of K2 Promotions, Tom Loeffler. We are actually in Mario Lopez's office, but that's a long story. Tom, be honest. When you decided to make the move to go West Young Man, as they said, and, and house a fight in the West Coast with Gennady Golovkin, what were your realistic expectations in terms of ticket sales? Well, we figured with an opponent like Rubio, um, who's WBC interim champion, popular in the Mexican uh, community, um, a well-known opponent, uh, well-known boxer as far as uh, having fought uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Kelly Pavlik, having a knockout over uh, Lemieux. You know, there was a lot of uh, demand to bring Gennady over here, a lot of fans that wanted to see him live. And so this was the perfect uh, opportunity, the perfect timing, the perfect venue. You know, October outdoors in L.A. is going to be is going to be a great setting, and the response was fantastic. I thought, it, I, to be honest, Steve, I thought it would be full. I didn't know it would sell out a month before the fight. Mm -hmm. um, we've had to add bleachers, we've had to add standing room only tickets, and we're still looking at adding additional bleachers. So this will be by far by about 1,000 uh, people in attendance, more than any other previous uh, event at the StubHub Center. Tom, this, there's a statement that's been made then. So if any promoter or manager says in regards to Gennady Golovkin, well, he's not popular, he's not a draw, he's not an attraction, do you think after October 18th that excuse needs to be stuffed in the garbage pail? Well, I think after the last fight, you know, when you fight in the big arena in Madison Square Garden and you can fill it up basically on Gennady's popularity, when you can do that and then you come to the other coast, to Los Angeles, and you can sell out an arena like StubHub, it's clearly StubHub is not big enough for a, fight like, a fighter mm -hmm. like Gennady, especially against uh, someone like Rubio. Uh, that excuse gets old. I mean, we have the full financial backing now of HBO mm -hmm. um, with the ticket sales, and uh, you know that, that really maybe was applicable two years ago, but right now it's not applicable. Tom, what I found interesting, I know this kind of perturbed you, there seemed to be a movement or an attitude in boxing that as it related to that fight at the Garden against Danny Gill, they wanted you to fail. First of all, why do you think that was? And number two, do you believe that? Do you think other people in the industry wanted to see you fall flat on your face? Well, we, we felt some resistance, you know, just in terms of uh, here's a guy, he's just been fighting in, in America for two years, and now he's going to headline Madison Square Garden in the big arena. And it was, you know, and Gil was definitely a, a respectable opponent. He was a two-time champion, clearly the, the, the toughest fighter uh, uh, at that time that uh, Gennady had faced. But um, we did see some, some resistance, and we saw that, uh, you know, Gennady has so much potential in the sport and bringing new fans to the sport and, and excitement and new energy to the sport that uh, it's a phenomenon that we haven't seen for a long time. And, you know, he was the first fighter I think for eight years, uh, Cotto was the only fighter to, to go in the big arena in Madison Square Garden. So he's breaking a lot of new ground, and, and we look for a lot of things that are coming up for him in the future. Tom, as it relates to Gennady Golovkin, um, you have made, I, I think, a very interesting philosophical choice. I see a lot of begging going on with a lot of people. A lot of guys say, we want fights against everybody, but they don't build their own attraction. When did you make the decision that you weren't going to be just a guy stuck in Indian casinos and then begging for fights, doing the press release, that, that your philosophy was going to be, I'm going to build my own attraction if I can't get the big names to face us? Well, we laid the groundwork. We laid the foundation when Gennady and his management team made it clear to us that uh, – they wanted to fight in America, and Gennady wants to become you know, popular in America. He understands uh, his situation, like he says, that uh, if you're popular in America, everything gets shown internationally, it gets shown mm -hmm. worldwide. And so the opponents over here in America, HBO uh, broadcasting his fights live here uh, from America, and the foundation that we laid was uh, from even when we, before we had the Proxa fight, um, we had a press conference in, in Las Vegas, and any time we fought in on the East Coast, uh, in New York or, you know, wherever the fight would be, we would always have a Los Angeles press conference. So mm -hmm. we kind of laid the foundation for him coming uh, to California anyway. But, you know, we would we would invest in his career. This is a long-term project with Gennady. It's mm -hmm. not a one-fight, two-fight, one-year, two-year project. You know, we're looking at him being the, the biggest superstar in boxing over the next uh, year or two years. And with that, there's a lot of investment. You know, we had a lot of financial risk going to the big arena in Madison Square Garden. There's a lot of costs, you know, in, mm -hmm. in New York, you know, with the marketing and the hotel rooms and transportation, everything like that. But 
the payoff is what you're seeing now as far as the, the media buzz and the popularity and the name recognition that you get from fighting in New York, fighting in Los Angeles, and that, that's what we're capitalizing on right now. You know, it's interesting. We are here because you did a radio show. Gennady did with Mario Lopez. You guys are going to the hockey games. You guys are doing the ribbon-cutting ceremonies. Has interest, is that alone a gauge or proof that there is renewed or there is new interest in Gennady Golovkin in terms of his Q rating? Well, we, we want to build him outside of boxing, outside of the sports world. We're bridging the gap with the entertainment world. You know, he went to the, the HBO party at the Golden Globes. He went to the HBO party at the Emmys. Mm -hmm. He went to the ESPY awards. And so we're really doing a lot of work and a lot of uh, investing a lot of time and energy really building his brand, not only over here in the United States, but also internationally. I mean, he's invited a week after his fight. He's invited as the as a guest of honor to back to Monte Carlo to be there. And, and then he's going to be in Kazakhstan after that. So he's he's building his global brand and we're capitalizing on that. Well, now. Speaking of the global brand, last couple of years, you've had the yearly fight in Monte Carlo. Will that continue in 2015? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, HBO can't fill his schedule over here. In the United States, um, he has given us the directive. He wants to for fight four times a year. Um, that's another Even thing. Even next year. Absolutely. That's the other thing that the fans appreciate is they appreciate his activity and, uh, you know, us just getting the best available contenders in the ring that will agree to fight. I mean, we almost had a huge fight uh, lined up in July against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., but, you know, you can't force the guys to fight. Just like Peter Quillen, a lot of people were asking, well, you know, blaming it on, well, you know, Gennady's with HBO and Quillen's with Showtime. But that fight could have been made. That fight could have gotten made if both fight, if both sides wanted to make the fight. We clearly wanted to make the fight. We would, you could just never get a response. And I'm not singling out uh, Quillen, but that's just an example that, you know, he wants to fight the best. He wants to fight all the champions. Um, he's fighting the, the interim champion now uh, from the WBC with, uh, with Rubio. But you know, we, we look at uh, his future as being uh, very bright, and, and the fans appreciate his activity and the, level, and the fact that it's clear that he'll fight anybody. Tom, you guys have done New York. You're doing L.A. Everything goes okay October 18th, as expected, against Marco Antonio Rubio. Would you say that Las Vegas is the next frontier? <laughs> that would be the next destination. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a triangular market. Um, and, uh, you know, a big fight. You know, if there's a fight with Canelo, it would be a perfect fight in Las Vegas. If there's a fight with Cotto, I mean, that would be the biggest fight Madison Square Garden has seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the opponents, but Gennady's willing to go anywhere. We made it clear to Eddie Hearn that uh, Gennady would move to 168 and, and fight Froch over in England. Mm -hmm. So he's very uh, versatile. He, he will go to different weight divisions um, if the fight makes sense. You know, Froch sold, you know, sold out the soccer stadium. Um, Chavez is, is, is a proven pay-per-view commodity. So we're just looking for the big fights, and I think if everything goes the right way. With that being said, Steve, I want to make it clear that nobody's underestimating Rubio. I mean, okay. Rubio's probably the biggest puncher that Gennady's faced. He's got 51 knockouts out of 59 wins. And if everything goes right uh, in October, we're looking for a big uh, 2015 for him. Tom, final question. It's the most important question on behalf of all the boxing fans. And for safety of everyone at StubHub, have you made it clear to AEG that they're going to have to bring in more beer kegs? Because I've seen this place when they've sold out of beer. Folks, it gets ugly. Tom, this is on you now. <laughs> for the safety of all the fans. Yes. <laughs> so there's no riots over yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Um, they, they have said that they're going to staff their full capacity uh, for the concessions. So hopefully there won't be any, uh, any thirsty uh, fans. But... <laughs> Um, we're not going to have, that's the other thing with, with the show that we're putting together. We have seven fights, but there's seven quality fights. You know, it's not going to be 10 kind of drawn out, you know, mismatched uh, fights. We've got a great uh, co-feature, probably the best co-feature of the year with uh, Donaire and Walters. we got uh, uh, Reyes, Marcos Reyes fighting Abi Han. Uh, Edwin Rodriguez is on the show. So there's a lot of uh, great fighters uh, on the show, and it's going to be a full, a full day of uh, of, of quality boxing and I think the fans will come away happy because the money that they've paid they'll get a lot of value that's the other thing that our philosophy was to price the tickets very reasonably to get as many people in the arena I didn't realize it would sell out a month ahead of time yeah. but that was really our goal and it's going to be full it's going to be the biggest I mean that's that's saying a, uh, that's a big statement Steve with only two years fighting in the United States uh, a kid from Kazakhstan to sell out and be the biggest attraction. I mean, Julio Cesar Chavez has fought there before, Andre Ward has fought there before, and for, for um, Donera has fought there before, uh, for uh, Gennady to outsell all those names by far, I mean, it's not even close, 
um, is, is a big statement to his growing popularity. All right, Tom, best of luck October 18th. This is Steve Kim for UCN.